Hi, I'm Peter Clausen from Bugs in Cyberspace. My website has been up for 24 years. Check it out at bugsincyberspace.com. Want to give a quick shout out here to Richard from the Tarantula Collective. He has a new YouTube channel as well called the Exotic Pet Collective. And I just finished watching his interview with my friend Jesse, who appears at one point holding a net in this video you're watching right now. Skipper Butterfly here. And somebody's taking an interest in it. Green Link Spider. All those butterflies flying around, Jesse. So many potential fail videos. And oh. He hasn't even swung the net yet. And there you go. <laughs> really enjoyed listening to the two of them talking, two of my favorite people in the online pet bug hobby. Although, use that term a little bit loosely because Jesse is more involved in running a conservation-oriented business. And Richard is a YouTuber primarily who features a huge array of tarantulas on his The Tarantula Collective channel. But this new business of his where he's doing podcasts and interviewing here, uh, people here on YouTube, you got to check it out because I'm really enjoying those interviews and I think you all will too. Today's video is about green lynx spiders, Pukesha viridens. I'm not probably pronouncing that correctly. Didn't practice it a bunch of times. Um, but they are one of the most beautiful spiders in the United States and they are as green as Kermit the Frog. Um, just, just such beautiful spiders. And you may not be a spider lover, but I don't know if you like emeralds or um, the lamp you can probably see the reflection of here. Um, th they are just a, a shade and a depth of green that is almost unparalleled in nature and just such gorgeous spiders. Some of you will still probably find them creepy and the majority of people here are probably insect keepers. But check out the video and let me know what you think. I have raised them quite a few times before. They are a really easy species to keep and very aggressive towards their prey, which makes feeding and growing them very easy. I highly recommend them, not just to spider keepers, arachnid keepers, but to tarantula keepers who maybe want to branch out a little bit from that one single family of spiders. I mean, people who keep tarantulas, there are so many different species available in the hobby, but I personally enjoy seeing all of the different families of spiders that are available in the hobby and would never want to restrict myself to any one family of spiders. And in, of course, like jumping spiders, there are so many species of different jumping spiders that you can see out there. So check it out, keep an open mind, and thank you for watching. This is a green lynx spider. One of the prettiest spiders native to the United States, in my opinion. Sometimes they have shades of pink there on their abdomen. This one doesn't. Still has some nice yellows there. The joints on the legs and those bristles. Gotta love the bristles. The first baby has just come out of the egg sack there. Let's go in and take a peek. There it is, right up there, and the second one coming out just behind it. Baby green lynx spiders. And there's the mother. Her abdomen, of course, much thinner than it was before. She deposited her egg sac, and she has recently eaten a couple flies, and so she was considerably thinner even than this. One of the most beautiful spiders in the United States, 
She's got about a two inch leg span. This one, because of its coloration, has some mobility, but I don't think they are ready to hunt just yet. Perhaps in this species here, they need to molt one more time before they're active feeders. Although the sclerotized eyes on it suggest to me that they see well enough to at least get away from predators. And I don't recall seeing them at this stage before, even though I've hatched many egg sacs of them in the past. And so I'm just sort of remembering as I take the video here. And I think that they need to shed their skin one more time before they actively pursue prey. And so they may be feeding off some of the reserves in their own bodies here at this stage. What's mother doing down there? Just kind of protecting her egg sac. We're just sort of peeking through the top of this 32 ounce deli cup that was originally a home for a Phidippus Johnsony. <laughs> Here we are the next morning. Looks like one of the babies is still hanging out right up there at the top. No more have come out. You can see a little bit of orange there through the wall of the egg sac. And I just noticed that over here there is a Turkestan roach that's been hanging out in this enclosure. And I should probably remove that. The mother, she's just hanging out there by her sack. And she's probably not going to run over there and hunt, but this roach, having been in here probably for a few weeks now, I have fed the mother a couple flies, which of course flew up to the top, crawled around right near her to the point where she could take them rather quickly. But this roach has been hiding in here somewhere and I can see it there now, and it could conceivably go and nibble the babies. Roaches, when they don't have anything else to eat, will go and predate sometimes, especially if a young spiderling is molting. And at that time, they start picking the melanogaster fruit flies off pretty quickly. So I put this blue bottle fly in the container here with the green link spider. And it's going to make its way up here. Wants to move higher and higher. Spider being very visual. It's no trouble seeing it. And you can see that it pounced on the fly rather quickly. I'm guessing that it's going to take the fly back up to where its egg sac with all those babies is here in a moment. Doesn't want to leave its babies unattended for too long. You can see that the legs on this spiderling are darker than they were the other day when it first hatched out of the egg sac. And I'm sorry that we're having to look through the container sidewall here to see this spider and its prey. See the spider is envenomating it right now. Not sure whether that's venom that's dripping off the front of the fly there or not. And moving back up now, a little bit closer there so as to protect it's brood, and you can see that she's now right back up there, having her meal and standing guard at the same time. A whole YouTube video <laughs> taken through a half inch gap in a deli cup. Don't want to move her around too much, so we'll leave things be. That one captured itself a fresh meal. None of these are terribly hungry. 
their abdomens are still fairly plump. But they're pushing the next molt. They've molted twice since they first hatched. Just a massive green, a sea of green. All abdomens and legs, lots of them. Kaleidoscope of spiders. <laughs> They'll share fruit flies sometimes, work together to take them down and feed on a single one at the same time. Zoom in a little bit here. They're very small. See it next to my thumbnail there. Not a good place to hang out if you're a fruit fly. There goes one. Mass of the fruit fly may have been just a bit larger than the spider itself. Time to feed these baby lynx spiders. Do this all with one hand, you're really good. You can see they're about third instar now. Green lynx spiders. I've taken pictures or video of the adults on my account before. You can see all the older fruit flies in there, the husks. The head of a green lynx spider and those speckled legs bristle eat. Spiders are often identified family on the basis of the arrangement and number of the eyes. This particular species, I found out just in the last year or so, is capable of spitting its venom. Look at those two interesting bristles right there. Didn't know those were there until just right now. There it is, cleaning its leg. This specimen just molted in the last 24 hours. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.